Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here for VideoCopilot.net, and welcome to another very exciting After Effects tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at stabilizing your video footage, and this technique is going to go way beyond just using the built-in stabilized tool of After Effects. We're going to be using some expressions to sort of limit the amount of smoothing that's going on and so that you will just get rid of those sharp jarring movements in your video footage so put it this way we're getting the Blair Witch out of your video now if someone says to you wow your video looks great it's it's a lot like that movie the Blair Witch Project well that's not really a compliment so you should probably start over now we're gonna go ahead and jump into this but before I do I gotta give credit to the guy who I got this technique from and his name is Mark Christensen and he has the best After Effects book out there now there's a lot of books out there but the bottom line is this is the most advanced you can get it for less than forty dollars and uh, I definitely recommend that so let's go ahead and move on to the tutorial now I would have had this tutorial done sooner but I had to go to the dentist and get a cavity fixed and so they put this numbing stuff in my mouth well anyway that wasn't really the problem but afterwards we went to the zoo and a snake bit me in the face and so it swelled up really bad and it just caused a lot of problems but I'm back in the game and we're gonna jump into this tutorial right now so here is the before shot so you can see there's a lot of swift jerking movements now let's take a look at the after shot using this stabilized technique by Mark Christensen. Now what's great about this technique is that we still have all of the main movement of the camera it's just not as jerky as the original so let's go and jump right in and uh, this way you can use it on your own footage right away so I'm gonna take our patrol car footage drop it into a new comp and what we're gonna do is motion track it so I'm gonna choose tracker controls and we want to choose stabilize motion and we're gonna pick a point now like I said you can use this technique for a lot of different video footage you just need something to track whether it's a background element or a car or a building you just want something that's always gonna be in the shot okay now that I have the tracking point in place I'm gonna size this down and then size the search area up because the shot is pretty shaky and then I'm gonna analyze forward okay so that looks really good now I can track the rotation and use two points but in this particular shot it's not necessary but you can use the rotation as well so right now I'm gonna click apply and choose OK okay this is what After Effects does to stabilize your footage it moves everything around that single point now the problem is we're losing a lot of the footage because this shot is very shaky but what we want to do is sort of smooth out this tracking data and sort of limit the intensity that it offsets the footage and that way we can maintain more of our footage and ultimately have a better looking shot so what we're gonna do is create a new null object and then we're gonna create a new 3d camera and we're gonna make it 50 millimeter choose OK then turn on the 3D layer switch for the video. The next step is to copy the anchor point data from the footage to the null object. So I'll select the anchor point, move to the beginning of the footage, choose edit, copy, select the anchor point parameter, choose edit, paste. Now if you're also tracking the rotation, you want to make sure to copy that as well. There'll be keyframes next to the rotation that you're going to want to copy. Likewise, you want to make sure the position is the same as well. So in this case, it is. Next thing we're going to do is parent the camera to the null object. Now, essentially what we've done is taken away that stabilization. By using the tracking data connected to a 3D camera, we're offsetting it the same amount that it's previously been offset so that we see no effect. But what we want to do is smooth it out and reintroduce some of that tracking data so that the shot doesn't have as many jerky movements so to do that we're gonna select the null object hit a bring up the anchor point hold alt and click on the stopwatch and then we're gonna type a very simple expression s m o t h smooth point two comma five so what this says is smooth 
every 0.2 seconds and five samples. Now, let's go and take a look at what this does. Now, real quick, we can see that black is being introduced on the top and on the bottom. So that's showing us how much is getting smoothed out. Now, if we lower the time to 0.1, we're going to see less black, also meaning less smoothing. But remember, be careful, the higher you go on the time, the more black you're going to see in the edges of the shot. So for this particular shot, we're going to set it to 0.2. Now, it does offset you know, a little bit, but what we can do then is either scale the footage up or add a motion tile to sort of repeat the edges. And you can find out more about that on the earthquake tutorial at videocopilot.net. So anyway, if we uh, take a look here, you can see the shot is not nearly as jarring as it used to be in its original state. So right there was the original footage. Now remember, if you want to apply this to the rotation as well, make sure to put this expression on the rotation value once you copy it from the footage to the null object. So as you can see, it's a pretty simple technique. A uh, few little steps you got to follow and you should have great looking footage every time. Well, well, not at well, not every time, but more times than not. Okay, now this is a bit of a follow-up to the previous tutorial on creating smoke elements. So what we're going to do is take our footage, drop it onto a new comp, and I'll remind you it's completely unrelated. Um, what I'm going to do is create a new solid. Choose Effect Trap Code Particular. And what we're going to create is smoke coming off the back of this patrol car. So we're going to go into the emitter, change it to a box change the direction to directional and right now it's set to fly away from the camera so you can see that it's pushing backwards just like we want and we're going to turn the velocity up to about 6000 and the directional spread down just a bit so the particles aren't going everywhere and we also want to make the size a little bit wider to cover the car back now we do want to set up a custom particle so I'm going to go into our project take our smoke element from the previous tutorial drop it into a new comp create a new solid white put it below the smoke element F4 set it to luma inverted make a new adjustment layer and by the way this is all covered in the previous smoke tutorial so just going through it here we're going to choose color correction colorama output ramp gray input alpha and then we'll set the back color to sort of a smoky orange and bring the alpha down then I'm going to close this out go into our project bring that smoke element comp into this comp shut it off back into particular go to the effects we're going to go down to the particle settings we're going to set it to custom particle from the smoke element layer and we'll increase the size now we want the life of the particle to be one and we want to emit 50 particles per second keep moving down here size over life we're gonna set up a ramp and that way they're still large as they fly away from the camera and then we want the opacity over life to just be this little ramp where it fades them out. We'll increase the size too so that we can see a lot of smoke. Then we'll alt click on the rotation, type random, 0, 360, close the parentheses. That's going to create a random direction for each of the smoke elements. Then we'll change the rotation speed to 1 and that way the layers are spinning out of control now we can also change the transfer mode to screen and that way the particles blend together a little differently so right now we're at a point that we want to be at we can always adjust the opacity to kind of lower the intensity of our smoke but right now we're just kind of create this random smoke and we want it to kind of come off the back of this car now to do that we're gonna create a new solid 
So this is a little bit of roto technique and what we want to do is create a mask around the main part of the car. So I've taken our layer, I'm going to shut the eye off and then just move forward with the pen tool and just start drawing around our car. Now this works because the car is for the most part stationary towards the camera so obviously this isn't going to work for every instance but hey it's going to work right now and that's all that matters. As long as I don't look like a fool, I'll say anything. I mean, I'll say anything. Okay, so we're going to just bring it around. doesn't matter too much in the front. Then I'm going to turn that layer on and then turn the particular layer on and put it just beneath the mat. Then I'll set the particular layer. You can see the smoke coming off of it. We're going to set that to alpha inverted. And so now our smoke is just around the car. We want to move the particle layer over as well so that the particles are emitting already. And then we can just position it to be coming off of the back of the car. Now the one problem is not quite lining up. So what we need to do is motion track our footage. So I'll bring up our tracker controls. We're going to choose track motion. And again, we're going to track the license plate. And once that's finished, I'm going to go into the comp here and create a null object. Choose Edit Target, select the null object, and then click Apply. OK. So now we've got a null object there. And then we're going to parent the mat and the particle layer to that null object. So what I've done now is basically hooked them up so they're linked together. Now we have some obvious mat issues because our footage isn't lining up perfectly throughout but we can fix a few of those things by keyframing the mask. So we'll click on the stopwatch, we'll move forward and basically we just want to tighten it up over time. So here I'm just going to scale it up all together, move it into position. And the reason it's so easy is because we have that tracking data that's making it easy. So we don't have to move it too much. Okay, so once you get that pretty close, um, you'll be able to see a pretty cool shot. So right now the smoke's coming off the back and we'll also smooth out the feathering on the mask. So we'll hit F and turn that to maybe 8. And the other thing we can do is select the matte layer, take the rectangle mask tool and just draw a line kind of through the middle. Hit F and feather that out a lot. And that will just blend it with the ground a little bit better as it's flying away from the car. So this obviously looks like this car is going to need a tune-up pretty soon. We can also color correct the particles, effect color correction curves, or the red channel, just probably give it some more green tones to match the footage. I'll go back to the mat and bring the expansion in a little bit, almost as if the smoke is all over this vehicle. Go back up to full res. So with a little bit of work you could probably clean the mat up and create a really intense shot. Now I'm probably gonna get a few emails from people saying hey but Andrew wouldn't you see the smoke in the background and to that I would say well don't call me Andrew call me sir but uh, aside from that I would probably give you this advice create a mat from the footage of the window. Now to achieve that illusion, what we're going to do is duplicate the footage, control D, bring it to the top, choose effect color correction tint, effect color correction curves, and what we want to do is make a mat out of the window. So we'll bring the black down, turn up the contrast. So that should work well. Then we're going to create a new solid green just so we can differentiate it. And then we're going to make a mask around the window area of this mat. So just 
draw it here. Hit F and we'll feather it out maybe five. And then we'll take our footage, set it to alpha mat. So now it's like that. And then we'll take the matte layer, which is the green layer, and parent it to the null object with our tracking data. So now we've created sort of a moving matte. And we may need to scale uh, the mask up. Let's see, M. Animate the mask shape so that it stays on the window. Should only take a couple of keyframes. Looks good. And then what we want to do is use this in conjuncture with the original mat that we have down here. So the red mat and the green mat need to be linked together somehow. So what we'll do is get the null object out of the way. Now this part's going to be a little tricky. What I want to do is unparent the null object from within this comp. And I want to do that at the very first frame. And then I'm going to take our mat, our footage, and our other mat, and we're going to pre-compose it. Layer, pre-compose. Choose OK. And then I'm going to copy the null object. Alt, double click on the pre-comp, and then paste the null object into this comp. We'll bring up the transparency. I'm going to turn on our red mat, and then I'm going to select that layer, and we're going to make it black. So we'll change the solid setting to black. Then we're going to create a new white solid and place it at the bottom. And then finally, we're going to take the green and the black mat and parent it to the null object. So now you can see everything is somewhat linking together. Now we do have sort of an excess problem here, but I probably won't worry about that for now. So we'll close the comp. We've got this perfect mat. We're going to set particular to Luma mat. Shut off the pre-comp. Now, if we look closely, we can see smoke in the back window. And then also remember to take the particular layer and parent it back to the null object. And everything should look pretty cool. So let's check it out. Okay, pretty intense. And then after you're done with all this, render it out, import it, and then stabilize it. You see how that all works? It all ties in back together to the theme of the original tutorial, whatever that was. I don't even remember at this point. Um, anyway, my name's Andrew Kramer for videocopilot.net. Of course, come check out our blog. Don't miss the basic training series. And uh, of course, our great DVDs and products. Be sure to check them out. We appreciate your support, and I will see you next time.